to the virtual classroom. Thank you, Dr. Debag. Of course, it's a pleasure for me to be with you today. Unfortunately, we could not be present in person, but I'd like to thank you for the invitation. And I'd like to thank the uh, FIU because this course is really fantastic. As Dr. Debag mentioned, I am going to speak about pneumococcal invasive disease in Latin America and look at the trends and, of course, prevention measures as well. I have no disclosures to report for this talk. I would like to begin with something that we all know and is makes us quite proud. We have two excellent tools to fight against invasive pneumococcal disease, PCV10 and PCV13 vaccines. However, at a worldwide level, the pneumococcal invasive vaccine, uh, disease continues to be an important cause of mortality and disability in many of the countries. Both vaccines have shown to be very successful in reducing the burden of serotypes for which they have been designed in order to protect patients. And in knowing the epidemiology of invasive pneumococcal disease and its impact is critical for the next steps that we are going to be taking. Importantly, we need to know the temperature variations in prevalence of some of the serotypes that are causing disease in our region and, of course, worldwide as well. The great majority of countries, and I'm, I'm happy to see this green of hope when we show this map, most of the countries worldwide have introduced some of the two vaccines against pneumococcus. Of course, it's not just an issue of introducing the vaccines, but also to maintain adequate coverage rates. Still in the Southeastern Asian region, there still are some countries that are now planning for 2020 to introduce these vaccines in the regiments, uh, immunization regiments. But generally, most countries currently do have these protection vaccines available. This is the map of our region where you can see that most of the countries are vaccinating against pneumococcus. There are some countries that use the 13 valent vaccines, others are using the 10 valent vaccine. And of course, I would like to emphasize that in my country, in Costa Rica, since 2007, we were one of the first countries to introduce this vaccine. We began with PCV7 and then continued with PCV13. And the great majority of countries have had similar numbers. We started with a three plus one scheme, then we changed to regiments that are two plus one. And in some countries, in this case, Nicaragua, are using a three plus zero basically because of problem of important uh, um, mortality in children. And this uh, has led to a success in their strategy. We need to remember that Vaccines are not the ones that save lives, but rather vaccination programs are that are performed with good coverage rates. Unfortunately, there we still have a great disparity. We do not achieve coverage rates above 90% as you would like to see. There are few countries that currently do have those, and therefore we still have coverage rates that are less than 90 and sometimes 80%. That would mean that we could have re-emergence of some serotypes or residual disease that we need to control. But we are making progress, and I believe that that piece of the puzzle that is missing to achieve protection and immunity for our populations is already being achieved quite successfully. And uh, in the next slide, I will show you the updated data for our region. This study, which is the study by Audelo et al, published recently in The Lancet, they there analyze the reports, and these reports include more than 12,000 isolates from children younger than five years of age in 10 Latin American countries between 2006 and 2017. Importantly, most of these isolates were also obtained from children that were less than two years of age. Countries were divided in PCV10s and PCV13. PCV10 countries, Colombia, Paraguay, Brazil, and Chile, 
showed a generally a reduction in serotypes 1, 5, 6B, and 14. However, they did see an increase in serotypes 3 and 19A. And in the four countries, they saw a significant increase of serotypes that were non-vaccine types. In countries that use PCV13, i.e. Argentina, Uruguay, Mexico, and Dominican Republic, which were the ones that were investigated, they found the following, a reduction in serotypes 14 in Argentina, Uruguay, Mexico, serotype 1 in Uruguay, and serotype 5 reduced in Argentina and Uruguay. They also saw an important increase of serotype 3 in Uruguay and serotype 19A in Mexico. We need to consider that Mexico has coverage rates that do not exceed 90%, and that could be one of the explanations. They also found in the countries called PCV13 an increase in non vaccinal types. They looked at Two countries we know that in Venezuela they have introduced the pneumococcal vaccine nonetheless for some time they are not really using it operationally so in that article they considered it as a non-PCV country and what they found in Cuba and in Venezuela is the following an increase in serotypes 14, 19A, 6B, 6A and 19F for Cuba especially serotype 14 and as to Venezuela especially they found an increase in the serotypes 19A and also in serotypes 14, 6B, 19F, and 5. And this, like I said, for periods comprised between 2006 and 2017. Very importantly, we need to consider non-vaccine types. We're going to see this in some slides later on. They actually make the difference between PCV10 and PCV13 countries, and there's a large list of non-vaccine serotypes. It's important to mention them because of the number of isolates, these serotypes represented 16.6% of what was found. And we can see that there is a large variety uh, these isolates are very heterogeneous, and in some places, more some are more important than others. In the Dominican Republic, they didn't look at this in further depth because there were few isolates, um, barely 58. Now we shall see what happens in, in some countries that in the last years have been reporting. This is a very interesting study where they analyze a cost effectiveness and uh, of, to replace the PCV10 with PCV13 vaccine in infants. They found the following. If they wouldn't, wouldn't change, they will have to see a in significant increase in serotypes of 19A. And this was obtained looking at a modeling at five years, and they showed that because of the residual dif the disease that is still remains after using PCV10 that was successful and reduced the burden of disease in Brazil. But that remnant, which basically is given by 19A, could imply then an important reduction of meningitis by invasive pneumococcal disease in case they would switch in the next five years. And you can see how if they would continue with the same vaccine, then the number of isolates of 19A projected at five years could rise. What happened in Ecuador? This study is very important because there are a few studies looking at the impact of vaccines in pneumonia and hospitalization and, of course, in mortality. You can see that this is a study that was carried out from 2005 to 2015. They analyzed mortality per 100,000 inhabitants in different age groups. What they found was that in infants less than one year old, reduction in mortality and hospitalization was dramatic. However, mortality in older adults, older than 65, did not change markedly. I mentioned this because although the burden of disease due to pneumococcus, of course, is of great concern to us pediatrician because we have 
many children and potential complications, we must not forget that older adults and also other age groups that have risk factors should be protected directly against this disease because they not necessarily vaccination in children will give us protection in other age groups. For that, we would need to have very high coverage rates and for many years. Therefore, the most prudent thing would be to vaccinate this population as well. In parallel to the study that I showed before, we have this other interesting study by Dr. De Oliveira, where she analyzed several countries and measured the mortality in such countries of Latin America and the Caribbean. And they found that all these countries, there the reduction in deaths in children between two and 59 months was really marked. So the prior study as well as this one show that the vaccine against pneumococcus has an important effect in reduction of morbidity and mortality due to pneumonia. This study is also quite interesting by Dr. Carasquilla et al. And they looked at the epidemiology of the immunization against pneumococcus regarding presentation of pneumonia and otitis media in several cities of Colombia. You can see that the overall mortality for countries in general was reduced in 49%. They had no national data with regards to the incidence of otitis media and all pneumonias, but they did find some significant differences according to the city analyzed. In Barranquilla, all the causes of pneumonia in Increase all cause pneumonia, but in Cartagena they were reduced. So we could say, with regards to the study of Carrasquilla, is that very probably this has to do with residual serotypes that are circulating, and of course with a remnant of disease which still remains in Colombia. And without forgetting the importance of the different coverage rates that we can find in those cities and the country at large. Yes. And. This is the recently published study from Argentina that shows something which is really striking, which is the reduction of bacterial meningitis due to streptococcus pneumoniae, analyzing the pre-vaccination time with the post-vaccination time. And you can see how in children under one year, Reduction was as important as 64% and below five years was 51%, meaning that as it happens with the Amophilus influenza, we are controlling the bacterial meningitis thanks to the application of the different vaccines in the region. What's next? You know that we have two new vaccines, the PCV15 and PCV20, that have serotypes include new serotypes included, and we hope to have a greater impact using these vaccines. See how the 20 valent vaccines contains new serotypes. However, if we take into account all this data and we compare with the Agudelo study, we can see that many of the serotypes which are not vaccinal reported in the Sireva study, 29% were due to the 6C, which is not in the vaccines. 22.6 for the 15A and 24 and 24F have almost 40% presence in the sample. There were uh, almost 2,000 samples, more than 2,000 samples representing 16%. So we still have some type of residual disease that won't be covered. And we hope or we expect to have better vaccines with a wider spectrum so that we can cover all this.
Conclusions then, after having analyzed all this data, the PCBs have been very successful in the region, that the burden of disease has considerably decreased since the introduction, introduction of these vaccines, that there is a high non-vaccine type diversity after the introduction of PCVs, but we now have a better epidemiological surveillance and that we must continue with this surveillance so as to understand the load of residual disease that we have to fight against and that we have to analyze the role of the next generation of PCVs. And something really important that we must not forget is the need to expand vaccination to other age groups and other risk groups that not necessarily are being included and protecting nowadays. And I would like to thank you the opportunity to share with you my experience and Please, vaccinate and be happy.